What is going on everybody? Welcome to a tutorial covering the QT Designer. So up until this point we haven't really covered much in the way of layouts uh, because we've been manually coding everything via PyQT and idle. So uh, we haven't really covered layouts because probably the best way to do layouts is going to be via QT Designer. So it's not so much programming here as far as when the as far as the layout is concerned, but this is going to save you tons of time. So it's pretty stupid not to use it if you ask me. So if you have PyQT installed and you did the full installation like I was showing you guys, you should have the QT Designer. Now when you first open up the QT Designer, you'll have this choice here. Generally you're going to choose main window or widget. Main window is like a main window, it comes with a main menu and stuff. So that's kind of what we want most likely, but yeah, so we'll just choose that one. And then what you're, what you're given once it pops up is just a simple window to work with here. And just to talk real briefly about how the QT Designer is actually laid out itself, on the left hand side here you've got all the widgets, right? So you've got some layout widgets, which we haven't talked about yet, but then a bunch of other stuff like spacers and push buttons and checkboxes and calendar stuff and labels here, just basically everything, right, that, that is a part of QT. So these are all of our options, and it's, it's really as simple as click and drag. Bam, you've got a button. Bam, you've got a checkbox. Want a horizontal spacer? You got it. <laughs> uh, so this is, you know, nice a la carte uh, menus here. And I don't know, let's add a label too while we're at it. Okay, so you've got all this kind of stuff. And so what it's allowing us to do is really just do the layout aspect. So the functionality and the code of, you know, what happens when I push a button, we still have to handle that. But the layout we do with QT Designer. And this is really, really great because especially when we talk about layouts here in a moment, you'll see that if you want to deal with those, it's going to take a lot, so much longer to do it manually, especially if you change your mind. So once you have like a window kind of set up, what you can do is obviously like you can kind of, I mean, this is basically the window, but if you really want to see the window, right? Like your horizontal spacer isn't going to look like that. So what you can do is you can come to form and then preview, either preview, which is control R, or you can preview in and you can preview like the basic styles that you have uh, access to. So you can preview like these specific things like this. Uh, or you can just control R and preview it, you know, like this. So we have this window, and if we resize this window though, we'll see kind of the same problem that we had had initially is that the, the window, the stuff within the window doesn't resize as it ought to. So that's what we use layouts for. So you can apply layout to the entire window itself by just right clicking somewhere in open space and then coming down to layout and just choose a layout. So you got, let's do, um, Let's do a horizontal layout, so that'll just give us like columns. So this would be column one, column two, three, and four. Uh, so let's, uh, this divider is basically worthless, so I'm going to delete it. Um, or at least I thought I was going to delete it. Get over here. <laughs> I can't, I can't seem to, there, oh my goodness, there we go. Okay, deleted it. Okay, so we've got those. And then uh, another example here is... Uh, let me actually let's do a layout. Let's break that initial layout and let's give this a grid layout. Actually, um, there we go. Layout and grid. Okay, so then we can like move things all around and it kind of shows us the valid places that we could stuff stuff. Now the other nice thing is you can have the entire window as a grid layout, but then you can throw in another layout. Like okay, we want one of the grid spots to be a vertical layout, right? And then we can kind of, um, well, this one isn't going to let us change the size. But then we can, okay, throw in, uh, let's throw in a push button in there. And then let's try to stuff something else in there. See if we get away with it. Yeah. So as you can see, this is part of that grid layout that we just built. But then within that grid layer layout, we have a vertical layout as well. So now, though, let's do control R. And we can see here now we can resize this and everything resizes with it, right? And so that's pretty nice. So some of the other things that we might have a problem with is like, for example, this has text label and this is push button and checkbox and all this stuff. Well, to change that, it's pretty simple. You just double click on it and you can put whatever you want. So we'll put hello there um, and then push me and then or me. 
and then but not me <laughs> okay something like that and uh, check here that's good enough so then uh, on this that's kind of like this the stuff that we have on the left hand side here but uh, looking on the right hand side we have object inspector we've got a property editor which I didn't mean to move and then we have resource browser now I don't really use resource browser not really sure what its purpose is but object inspector and property editor are pretty useful so the object inspector this is like for your entire window you know what's going on here you've got the main window then you've got the central widget which is this grid layout you've got the stuff that is within the grid layout and then you've got this new vertical layout and the stuff that's contained within it so that's kind of the structure of the application. Then down here you've got the property editor. Depending on what you select will show up in this property editor. So we could click on this button and we get, oh, it's this push button. And mainly these are just kind of the settings. You probably won't change these very, very often. But one thing you should definitely always change is the object name. So the object name, here's push button. This is the object name like in your code. So this button is defined by push button. This one, push button three. This one, push button two. That's not very useful. So before we push this to Python code, we definitely want to rename these. So maybe this one would be, um, you know, but not me, right? To be kind of uh, going along with the name of the button itself. Uh, and then we could name this one, you know, push me. And then this one could be or me, right? Whoops, highlighted a little too much there or me okay so you can do stuff like that also if you ever wanted to change like the windows title you can't like you can't really click on the window and it pop up but you can come over to the object inspector click on main window and then you come down here to window title and you can change the window title so i don't know qt tut that's what i'll call it so there's that also if you want to add like a menu you can totally do that just double click there start typing stuff right file uh open save let's add a separator bam and then exit okay instantly done <laughs> right that would have taken us like you know i don't know three or four minutes to do we just did it like instantly uh and then here luckily for us we've got action open this one says action save this one's action at exit so this one actually makes a little more sense automatically you don't have to change the name but you can if you want so there's that and then obviously if you wanted to add more items as you kind of uh, do stuff here right if I added edit here it gives us a new option later you know so as you add more to this menu bar it just automatically adds stuff you know so if you wanted to you could now uh, now how do we actually get this to Python code so if you're on Windows and you go say uh, form view code you might get this error this is like a known error it makes no sense to me why this error still is in existence but it is so what we want to do if that didn't work for you is you can go file, save as, and we can save this. I'm going to save it in this really deep directory <laughs> in testing. And we're going to call this uh, pyqtdesigner, and it'll be a .ui file. That's just what it's being saved as. We'll go ahead and save that, no problem. So I have that file now. It's just right in here. And what we want to do now is open up a... Um, a console in there so open command window into there so make sure you're in the the actual directory of that file right so that's where the file is that's the path to this file so if you don't know how to do that you can always like you hold shift and right click the directory and you can open a command window there so once you've done that now we have to enter in some code to, to get this to convert so uh, if you if you can, you could sometimes get away with just doing pyuic dash uh, x for executable, and then we can change we can say pyqt designer dot ui. That's what I say it is, yeah. And then dash o for the output file, and we're just we'll just say pyqt designer dot pi. But I don't think this will end up working for me, but it might work for you. We'll try it. Right, so it's probably going to come up and say it's not recognized as a command. So now we need to reference that pyqtui or pyuic file. It's like a batch file. So now let's reference that. So it would be c colon slash python 34 or whatever version you're using, and then lib slash site dash packages slash 
Pi QT4 or 5 or 6 or whatever is at, at the time that you're watching this, slash Pi UIC 4 or 5 and whatever, dot bat, and then, same thing as before, X for executable. If you don't use the X, it just won't be ex it won't like actually create a window. It'll just be a bunch of definitions. You can run it, but it's not going to do anything. And then uh, we want to do this pi qt designer.ui. And then we want to do the da dash o. And then we'll do uh, the output to pi qt designer.py. Okay? So we'll do that. Hit enter. And you should now have a new file there, right? It should be PyQT Designer. We can open it and edit with idle. Here's all of that code. Again, there's no real functionality to it. It's just the layout and just the UI only. Uh, but let's go ahead and run that. And sure enough, here's our window. And that's that. So you've got all the Python code there. You did it in the designer. Obviously, this isn't really any ad advanced code, but hey, we built that in like 10 minutes. So that would have taken us a lot longer than 10 minutes to build all of that, including especially thinking about like the layouts that are involved here. And then like what happens when you're like, hmm, I want to change layouts. Well, that's a really kind of a challenge, especially if you have like a lot of stuff inside your layouts to kind of mentally go through what what objects need to be moved to what place in your code. That's that's pretty hard. And so having the QT designer there just it makes it so much simpler. So anyways, that's just a really quick introduction to QT Designer. Obviously, there's a whole lot more to it. This was kind of a silly application. But from here, all we really need to do is you, you know use connect to connect functions to these buttons. But we've already covered how to do that. So I'm not going to waste any time and do these simple connections to the buttons. But hopefully, you can see now how powerful just QT Designer is because really, uh, as far as I know, there's no TK designer, but maybe I'm wrong. If, if I'm wrong, let me know. But QT designer just makes things so much easier. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.